So welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing my version of the chill out build. As normal, it's not for demolishing legendary content, but this build is pretty good on heroic. You still got to be careful. You can't be careless with it, but you can comfortably get through most heroic content with it. Okay, so this build is based on all improvised gear. If you don't know where to get improvised gear from, just a quick reminder, at the crafting station, the gloves, holster and knee pads, you can craft improvised gear for. And you click down here. Craft it and it usually comes out pretty badly rolled. So this one's not particularly good. You'd you'd have to re-roll that skill haste and then spend a load of resources optimizing it. So you do need some that are that are good, if not great. And you need one in all three slots, ideally. So the key, the key thing about improvised gear is it has an empty mod slot. Usually you only have mod slots on the mask backpack chest but these instead instead of having other attributes they have they have a mod slot instead and the chill out mask has two mod slots so what that gives you is a maximum of seven mod slots instead of the usual three or six if you had improvised but no chill out chill out mask will come with two blues on it in my case all of them came from the lincoln memorial over here there's a few spots that the loot goblin can come from so it could be there from that manhole there's another manhole over here that I've seen him spawn from. And sometimes if you just hang around in the area, he'll run he'll run in from, from other directions as well. So that's the only place I've had him spawn this year. There are plenty of other places on the map where he supposedly will spawn. I've not had any luck with any of them. Okay, so let's take a look at the build itself then. Is I've rolled on weapons damage. I was lucky enough to find one with max armor regen as its secondary attribute. As an alternative, if you've got if you get one with max armor, you can roll roll on some critical hit chance. I haven't done the maths yet to figure out which one of those will give you the highest damage per magazine. So um, I, I should do that. But my, my feeling is that the increase in your primary damage probably slightly has the edge. And I'm, I'm, lucky, enough to, I'm lucky enough to have one of each so I can play with both. And I've put two 12% protection from elite mods on. We're, go, we're going for 80% protection from elite. So overall you need three 12% ones and the rest can be 11% get you 80 percent so before the chill out masks if you wanted 80 percent in protection for release you'd have to run the survivalist to give you an extra 10 percent with this mask you don't have to do that you can get up to the 80 percent if you can get all 13 percent mods and i don't have any of those you can get up to 78 percent with six which will leave you one free to do something else it's called sub one of the improvised so on all three pieces of improvised we've got weapon damage and critical hit damage and critical hit chance and we have a protection from elite mod moving on to the onto the pack we've got memento it's not a particularly well rolled one here got the damage and all the buffs i tend to spend a lot of time in cover so running around collecting the trophies i'm not usually making the most of the short term buffs i'm just building up the long term buffs memento instead of having any secondary attributes has three core it's got one skill one one armor and one damage Final piece is the door kicker's knock. It's not something I've previously used. It's Grupo Sombra, so it has 15% critical hit damage. We've got, again, critical hit chance, critical hit damage, max, maximum rolls on there, and it has perfect spark. So da damaging enemies with a skill increases your weapon damage by 15% for 20 seconds. So we're running the, the technician specialization. And the, and the main reason for running that is we're benefiting from that extra one skill tier. And we've got that extra damage against skill proxies. So the Warhounds, most importantly, this build help this this build helps you deal with them. I find them particularly annoying, especially the sniper ones. But this just helps you clear them quickly. Then you can deal with all the other enemies once they're out of the way. For the main weapon, we have the capacitor. That might seem like a bit of an odd option. When we've got six damage cores on. You know, usually you think about using the capacitor when you've got Lots of skill cores on so you're getting at least getting the benefit of that 7.5 percent extra damage for each skill core however in this in this case we've got our six damage cores giving us plus 15 percent damage and on top of that we've then got two skill tiers giving an extra seven and a half percent so we're increasing our damage even more so the capacitor's also got this skill buff so shooting enemies with the capacitor will boost your skill damage 1.5 percent per tier up to a maximum of 40. So that's that's quite a lot of damage. I mean, that's plus 60% skill damage at its peak. And the other main weapon we've got 
the white death. And this is a perfectly rolled one with Optimist on. Optimist works quite nicely with this with this sniper rifle. You get 3% damage for every 10% ammo missing, but because it only has five rounds, that means every shot you take is 20% of the ammo. So after one shot, it's got a 6% buff, so on and so forth, with pretty decent base damage, plus the headshot damage. And I'm on PC, so sniping's pretty easy. You might think about using something else if you're on if you're on console or you don't get on with sniper rifles generally. Grenade wise, so it's going to be either the normal concussion grenade or the EMP grenade. Just whichever whichever you prefer, it's not that important. Either either pick your favourite or switch between them as you see fit. Sidearm, I've got a D50, and you, you can see I haven't I haven't even re-rolled this. It's not a core part of the build. I haven't I haven't or I haven't modded it or re-rolled it. I could easily you know I can easily max that one out, but I haven't done that. I think Insync's good. So skill-wise, we have the Assault Turret. You can throw it up high somewhere in front of you. Uh, the enemies focus on that, taking a lot of the flak off you. It's going to benefit from the Capacitor's skill damage buff. Remember, you've got two skill tiers. And also, when the turret shoots things, it triggers Perfect Spark on the chest piece, which will boost the damage of your other weapon. For the other skill, we've got the Fixer Drone. Again, benefiting from those two skill tiers. Oh, and we've got some outcasts here. We'll just throw the turret in to them. Uh, they didn't have any elites with them and they weren't even really shooting at me so not the best example purples are going to be your biggest threat since since the elites have their damage reduced by 80 percent and the reds are generally fairly weak anyway the purples you do you do have to worry about and they should probably be your priority so here we have hammer guy he does, does a chunk of damage but but the healer drone is keeping me pretty safe clearly not been shot by anything else So I'm going to throw my turret in. There you go. Cleared all those out quickly. Taking their time, taking their time, reinforcing their buddies. And my sniping is already off at the moment. Hostile broadcast detected. Our critical burn. Access key detected. Progress halted. Manual override required. So every last one has been So that was pretty easy. I mean, that you know that shows that you you can do it quite quite easily. I've got a convoy here. Whether well, the turret isn't in a particularly good spot there. So I'm being shot at from someone behind as well. Oh, 
I need to take these guys out behind me because they're, they're just mean. I can't take it. I can't the purple guy is the priority. He can do me damage. The yellow guy knocks him out. Let's just go a few of these. Detected. I don't think it's much of a running gun build myself, although when you have the advantage, you can press it. The, the capacitor does stop from shooting you. If Somebody behind me now, three people behind me. Put my turret in a better position. Switching my focus to the purple guy. Focusing on the purple guy rather than the yellow again because he's the bigger threat at this point. While you can't get too cocky, you you can uh, you can take a bit of damage off them while you while you stand your ground. I probably should have done this earlier, but I'm just going to look take a quick look at the stats here. So you can see our critical hit chance is up at 47% with critical hit damage at 105% and headshot damage at 192. That's based on the sniper rifle. If I optimize some of my gear pieces a bit more, I can get that comfortably over 50. Uh, swapping it over, that drops a bit with the capacitor, but the critical hit damage goes up. You're doing more damage less often. As you can see, we've got 80% protection from elites. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave, leave comments below. I'll see you in the next one.